Hi, Mike with you. I went to this odd estate sale. I saw a sign. Go to it. All kinds of cars, but there weren't a lot of people there. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny. He's got the, he's got practically nothing now in the garage. It's all been sold out, sold out. And he's not letting people into the house. He's making some list and he's only going to let five people go in the house at a time. I, for the life of me, I don't understand that. Maybe he thinks it's a security thing. Maybe he's afraid that, <clears throat> you know, there are small item, items that are really valuable that someone might try to steal instead of pay for. I don't know. Just kind of odd. But anyway, and the people he was, uh, you know, were, he didn't have prices on something. But I watched and it was like, he'd say to someone, well, how much you, how much do you think you want to pay? Like, someone would say $12. And he'd say, yes, $12. Me, I got a, I saw a pair of interesting earphones and uh, a cable for the computer. And I said, four. And he says, yeah, sure. But what's interesting about these earphones there by, is it, it's GGMA. And they're a company that makes a lot of audio equipment, and they make high-end things. And I've never seen uh, ear phones that were made out of metal instead of plastic. <laughs> uh, now, going on their site, here they are. You can see their brass and uh, the little button and microphone is also or appears to be a piece of brass you can see that well maybe you can't see but there's a button here and uh, some holes for the microphone and uh so uh, i tried them and they really work well now on the site of course these are older they're not on there but some of the the sets that are on their site anyway are like 70 dollars because they're really you know high quality and they've got this and that feature and different things but I got a feeling these were probably some uh, really expensive earphones at the time. Now, <laughs> the problem is this. Oh yeah, this works perfectly in my old cell phone, but it doesn't work at all with my new phone unless I have this. It's funny, this was, I was looking through, I like to have some of the different connectors so it's like I can, I can buy what's available, or use what I have available necessarily, than going out and buying a whole new bunch of stuff. So this works as a adapter, and now uh, we can plug it into the the to the C uh, port that's on this. So, uh, but these ad these adapters can are really handy because. I don't know, a lot of times you don't want to be using the Bluetooth uh, on the phones from your earphones and stuff like that. They have to be charged and all these different things. I, I mean, I have some, but there's just times when I would rather have uh, something that's, you know, plugs directly into the phone and runs off of the phone power. And so now I've got a really nice set of them. It came in this neat little case. Uh fake leather case. I think it's fake. Oh, what's it say on the other? Oh, my goodness. I can't even read that. But anyway, there they are. That's my big purchase. And I got a, a cable. We're ha we've had all kinds of la a tabletop computer problems. And you know, now everybody does everything on the phone practically. The only thing that happens with our old computer is my wife, wife plays cards on it. Well, we wanted to print some things, and we just couldn't get the printer. You know, it's one of those wireless ones that you can get, connect, and, you know, but that part of it doesn't appear to work. So I bought a, you know, for the $4, I got this and a, a cable cord that I can plug that into the computer, and I'll see what happens. But I thought this was kind of neat. And, they, you know, they go back into the case a specific way, so they'll... Uh, They'll wind back in neatly. They showed on the site some person trying to pull these as hard as they could. 
you know, I wouldn't do that, but I guess the point is that the, at least the ones they were doing, the wiring is pretty strong. So it fits in like this. And then you have, uh, you know, a little protruding edge. So you, you know, wind that right around. And uh, then you're going to have a neat uh, little storage of your, your earphones. So, I mean, as long as you wrap them back on this, they're not going to be all tangled up. Do you know? <laughs> no. I hope you're thinking. Get ready for a challenge. Thinking challenge. Earphones can prove, or well, let's say they can prove the universe doesn't exist as the way we believe it does. And it may even point to a creator. And the thing is, okay, you, you buy earphones you know, and they're wound up, they're nice and neat. You put them in your pocket, and very, what happens every time you pull them out of your pocket, unless they're in a case like this, they get tangled up. Even the non-tangling earphones tangle up. I know now people have the ones without the cord, but I'm not going to do that because I know I'll lose just one of them and have to buy another ones. But, uh, so, you pick them out of your pocket, and they're stalled up. Well, put them back in your pocket, you know, do that for a million years and they're still going to be tangled. And that expresses something what we call entropy. That means that things uh, always, if acted on randomly, always move to their maximum entropy, which is a state of disorder. And once they've reached that maximum state of disorder, if you continue to act on them randomly, they will never, for all eternity, go back into order. It just doesn't happen. You know, at one time, people thought, you know, the thought experiment. Oh, if I remember hearing this in school when I was young. Oh, if you gave a monkey a typewriter and an infinite amount of time, he'll eventually print out War and Peace. And of course, now we know that's garbage. That's not true at all. A random pattern but not even a pattern, but randomness would happen. And no matter how long you do, it continues to be random. If you have a deck of cards, this was an article in Scientific America, which they didn't even really see the implications of it, but after you, if you shuffle a deck well seven times, it basically reaches its maximum state of disorder or entropy. And if you take that deck now and reshuffle it, check it, reshuffle it, check it for all eternity. It never goes back into the order it was in. You know, there was the, uh, you know how small an atom is, right? How big the earth is. Well, if you counted every one of those atoms, that's the chances that that would ever come back into the same order. Well, that's not correct saying it that way. Back up. See, there's a problem if you don't say it right. That means that there are that many possible combination of the card deck. In other words, the number of atoms that compose the Earth, if we numbered them from one to, we'd have to make up a new number for the end, or scientific notations, or quillions, zillions, billions, dillions. Uh, that's the number of different variations this deck could have. And only one of them is that deck that's in order. But again, what we've learned is, as if you continue to act on it in a random fashion, it will never go back to that one place where everything was in order. It, it, it just doesn't happen. You know, you can think, oh no, given an infinite amount of time, all choices will be manifest. No, that's not right. Uh, it just isn't observable. I mean, you know, all our laws of physics, you know, entropy, enthalpy, conservation of mass, and all of these different things, you put them together and they say, oops, how can there be a universe? If the universe was always here, it would already be run down. You know, there's no such thing as perpetual motion machines. People have tried and we know that's just impossible. You know, you take these cards and shuffle them. They never go back into order. We know that's true, too. So we know that order never comes out of disorder. Now, 
order can be imposed on a system and bring it back into order. <coughs> in other words, if there's anything left of that deck after it's been shuffled for, say, you know, a thousand years, I can take that deck, stack them out, blah, 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 and put them all back in order. But that takes an intelligence and it takes the power to do it. And so that's why uh, science points to the idea of this, well, the Big Bang, which was actually first proposed by a Catholic priest who was an astronomer, right? Uh, and Einstein thought he was a little off with his prediction, but he, he went and met him, and, and uh, Einstein agreed with him. He agreed that it had to be true, even though he thought it shouldn't be true, but he had to agree it was true, uh, or believed to be true. And uh, so it points to the beginning of the universe, and there, if you have a beginning of the universe, that means before it, you had nothing. You didn't even have nothing. You didn't have space. You didn't have time. You didn't have anything. Well, that points to a creation event and a creator. Because now if we look at things. Now we think there are, and who knows if we'll come up with thousands of more divisions of this, but there's like 40 or so subatomic particles. And they, they are... Each one of them has a certain order to them. And each one of them combined with certain other ones will form an electron, a proton, a neutron, right? And uh, the, these are kind of, again, a specific ordered, organized grouping of these subatomic, uh, subatomic particles. And then, so we have electrons, we have neutrons, protons, all of a sudden we start having the elements, and then we have compounds, and just, so just, you know, ignoring the whole life situation, but just looking at the physical world, the physical world points to a creation event, science says that, you know, supposedly we now know the universe is like 14 billion years old, the earth is like 4 billion, or when it actually started taking form, so we know there was a curvation bent, but we also know matter can either be created or destroyed. It can be transferred from matter to energy, but there there was a definite time when there was light. There was matter. It points to the idea of a creator God, and you've heard me speak about this in other uh, videos. But uh, it's and it's funny that. The people who have, like Steve Hawkins and all these people who've written these books, uh, the New Atheists, they're called, right? Actually, they put their own religion in it. <coughs> and by that, I mean they put in things that have to be accepted by faith because you can't prove them. Now, I can't prove there's a God. I can see evidence that points to it. But they also basically kind of make up that the laws of physics weren't in force back then, but now they are now, you know, and it's like, hmm, that's kind of shady, but it's that they, they mix the philosophy in with the science and they come out with this really uh, distorted logical step things that's completely meaningless because they thrown in this philosophy. So, you know, what we do know, the Earth is a certain age. Before that, there's no evidence that anything existed at all. And we know that the universe is, you know, tending towards its maximum state of disorder. One day the universe will be at that maximum state of disorder. And the universe will probably be and everything in it, basically in a dead situation. It can't, like go back on itself and bounce out because every time it would do that, <coughs> more energy would be lost in the process. So eventually it would stop. And again, like I say, the universe has always been here. It should have already stopped by now and it hasn't. <laughs> so next time you reach for something in your pocket, your book pocket and it's, you know, it's tangled up. Remember entropy. It's reached a higher state of entropy because 
it's in a random configuration and not in the neat little configuration when you bought it. Bye.